नमस्ते टू एवरीवन नमस्ते गोपाल भैया गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम टू द मॉर्निंग सेशन नमस्ते जी भैया टुडे वी हैव ओनली वन शेयरिंग इन इंग्लिश सो लेट अस स्टार्ट सो वी हैव विद अस प्रमोद कुमार जी हम प्रमोद कुमार जी से नमस्ते नमस्ते भैया कैन यू हियर मी यस यस योर वॉइस इज क्लियर सो लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस यू देन वी कैन स्टार्ट योर शेयरिंग बेस्ड ऑन द पॉइंटर्स सो प्रमोद कुमार दीदी इज वर्किंग एज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ ह्यूमैनिटीज एंड सोशल साइंस इन एन इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज ऑफ राजस्थान she started her uhb journey in october 2020 then did her uhb2 in february 2023 and then again she did uh, uhb2 in october 2023 and uh, regarding volunteering activity she uh, is trying to put some effort in her college like organizing sip and implementing this uhb course in her college So, with this brief introduction, I may invite Pramod Kumar Edith to uh, start her share. Dear Edith, I must say over to you. Yeah, thank you, Bhaiya, for introducing me. Namaste to all. As Bhaiya has introduced, I am working as an assistant professor in the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, Government Engineering College, Bharatpur, Rajasthan. I live with my small family in Bharatpur, Rajasthan. My husband is a bank manager working with Bank of India. We have two sons. Elder one is ten years old, and younger one is five years old. My extended family live in a small town, Tara Nagar, of Churu District, Rajasthan. Uh, as far as my UHV journey is concerned, for the very first time, I was introduced to UHV in October 2020 when it was mandatory for institutional faculty members to do UHV one. The moment I started listening to the content, I could relate, and the deliberation seemed to be answering my mistakes where I was going wrong in fulfilling my close relationships. I also jotted down few things to help me in living my life. in february 2023 i did uhv second and try to work more on my other relationships where i was facing certain issues although i am groomed with certain human values instilled by my parents but the moment my interactions with the outside world increased i started facing behavioral issues tussles conflicts the very tool of patience tolerance and being less reactive even if you are not wrong was missing in my upbringing or rather i would say i could not learn it because of my sanskars although in trouble situations where i feel hurt by outside atmosphere i would hardly react initially but i would feel the pain within my self used to resist that why people are doing this when i don't do anything this comforting with them whether it is professional journey or married life also social interactions i used to wonder how can somebody just talk like trying to be fooling me behave in an annoying manner how can do injustice how authorities like can do injustice partiality have double standards why people are too much aware of their own rights why don't they respect the human dignity in each and every person why am i left out not taken care by people around me not appreciated at all in any circumstances when i am fulfilling the relationships properly why not the other one doing it uh, so i used to wonder something might be wrong with me uh, so uh, after married life it happened like the initial phase was full of expectations grudges and more attention seeking from my husband in turn i used to react like making a mountain out of a molehill after my second son's birth one day i took a pen and paper and wrote my mistakes and his then i realized that the retaliation was more from my side then afterwards i started with self in introspection due to uneasiness inside so up till now i was escapist in nature to shun away from the person and never to interact again a resistance used to boil inside me 
so this is the way uh, like how i was before these morning sessions although i uh, already have done uhv1 and uhv2 although i have not yet interacted with the mentors because whenever a question occurs i think still here is more scope for observation secondly i listen while work in the morning as it is time for kids to go to school and husband also has to catch the train for agra so now uh, let me share my ob uh, observation and understanding of exercise 1 and exercise 2 uh, exercise 1 step 1 i can now see my imagination what is its content which stream of thoughts is going on inside me sometimes it is an overflow of thought after thought without noticing what is the desired expectation sometimes soothing thoughts sometimes contradictory where i am in opposition to certain people their sayings doings their decisions etc uh, like for example once my mother in law said to me what do you know of society because she wants me to visit her very often and stay with her for longer durations as my husband is the only son and my two sister in laws are busy in their own settled in their lives but because of my father in law's job and farms and few milking cattle she is having so she can't leave from that place so uh, i just expected that at least she should not like said this thing if she can't appreciate uh, although i am fulfilling my social responsibilities so why she said so this thought recurred in my mind again and again that uh, although i understand the social things in spite of this uh, why uh, she is saying like this so in this way most of the time the imagination remains occupied with thoughts which are unpleasant to the self but it keeps going and going the moment i uh, open my eyes in morning i start with planning of the day with routine works so or sometimes some other thought i feel entangled uh, i focus more on that in my thought process without intervening it sometimes positive thoughts often and sometimes optimistic thoughts boost myself i can see it Every, but every time i keep busy devising a mechanism to make a better self out of my present self so this is the way i just um, understood step for one step number 2 the feeling i get out of my imagination sometimes it is acceptable when i expect like to be creative about kids performances feelings of nurturing or care love etc i disapprove it when i am afraid about some bad happening or when some unpleasant thoughts occur after reading negative news where humanity suffers or the dual faces of people revealed but i wonder then again that thought of why people like betray lie etc so every uh, this is the way i observed step 2 step number 3 every moment of imagination is not harmonious for me although i could notice the harmony in this very nature and outside world uh, sometimes i feel like burdened or pressure on my eyes uh, when i think the outside world in coexistence then it really soothes me and i became in harmony i can step number 4 i can see it very clearly that i myself is responsible for my feelings earlier before these morning sessions i used to allege outside world or people responsible for putting me in this harmony i used to uh, think that sometimes it is my kids husband or neighbors or colleagues or family members or one anyone around me are babysitter authorities are responsible for my plight according to the circumstances once it happened like one of my neighbors when i just shifted here wanted me to converse with her for long durations uh, about outside world and other people and accompany her in doing market work so i could not express my reservations to her and considered her to be the one responsible for creating disturbance so later on i decided to limit it and maintain some distance presently i can freely express myself to her and share a healthy space and relationship so this way i improved myself uh, earlier i was not guided towards looking within i used to assume that people have spoiled my peace of mind in the condition of like they are backbiting they are misfeeding for me wrong assumptions by people for me so now i can clearly see that i myself is responsible for my plight as well as my happiness it is both the things are in my like lies in myself the basis of my feelings is 
sometimes right understanding sometimes it is based on assumptions prejudices and sanskars for family member like uh, sometimes when my family members say that school teachers are fully responsible for the learning of the kids then i respond no it is not like this parents has to fulfill an equal duty towards their kids teachers have limited time interacting with the kid they can't check out each and every minute details sometimes when i presume once like one of my colleagues when i approached for some official work just retorted me that you have signed on a certain document and like so he he said certain things then i assumed about my another colleague that he must have revealed this thing to him when i asked him then uh, he denied that he even did not know about this very thing then i realized my feelings were not based on right understanding so it is the right understanding which frees us from inner burden i understood it step number 6 a as it is obvious feelings of relationship harmony or coexistence are acceptable to me then feelings of opposition disharmony and struggle yet here are few i candidly mention that there are few relationships where i could not see a sunny side in continuing because of a fear that the moment i will move ahead i will be in victim mode again so uh, as far as victim mode again step number 6 b i remember english poet robert browning's line when i see step number 6b like all is well with the world god is in his heaven so uh, i can explore within to understand relationship harmony and coexistence in its completeness whole existence is seen in its proper place this is the only way which can give fulfilling life step number 7 i can ensure this that my feeling at the very moment will lead me towards relationship harmony and coexistence and it will not go otherwise when i am calm inside then i conclude this by this way i conclude only i can establish myself as a conscious unit in harmony with the other units in space i know very well that when i am disturbed at this very moment how it will lead to disharmony in my life its outside impacts i try to orient my feelings towards coexistence in its completeness when as a conscious unit i will be able to contribute to this outside society or in larger order finally i will live with peace and live with happiness in continuity so as far as the whole outcome of exercise 1 is concerned sometimes my family members feel happy that i am just on a healing journey or so they say yes you are improving sometimes they say you need to improve still more when i show temperament with the kids when they are too much obsessed with mobile usage not doing their homeworks on time so other times uh, i feel the uhv impact on myself now coming to exercise number 2 observing self and body and interaction between them step number 1 i can see that both the self and the body exist self as a conscious unit and body as an unconscious one body is only an instrument to perform certain tasks it is myself who is deciding factor of my physical activities step number 2 it is i who establish a communication with the body self establishes the communication with the body i instruct the body to walk stand sit cook eat drink water read teach learn listen to music play swing drive etc so all the activities happen after an instruction from the body i'm uh, sorry after an instruction from the self i am the one who decide step number 3 i am the one who decide what instructions are to be passed to the body and what sensations are to be read from the body it is i who decide whether to take the stairs or use lift i instruct the body to mount the stairs when uh, when i do uh, like busy in my work and feel thirsty i read the very sensation i ignore it for some time if i am too busy or until feel a very hard urge to quench the thirst so it is i who uh, read the sensations and which one is to be read by me step number 4 i am not the sensation the sensation is taking place inside the body 
the sensation of tiredness or feeling sleepy is given by the body and read by the self then i decide to have a power nap if it is day time or to hurriedly finish my routine work to go to bed if it is night time so i read the sensations i respond to the sensations step number 5 i respond to the sensations according to my sanskars perceived during my grooming education or with friends and during societal interactions so based on sanskars uh, step number 6a i do react when sanskar is based on assumption for example like when i give something to my kid to nurture his body the kid shows apathy and hardly finishes then i react suddenly that why is he not understanding that this very thing is to be finished soon this very thing is based on my assumption that kids must eat healthy food and nutritious things kids must eat whatever parents give to them ignoring the understanding part that this taste might not suit their palate or they might not feeling like eating something at the very moment something it might be difficult to finish all in one go so i just ignore later on i realize that i insist too much so uh, step number 6b i respond when sanskar is based on understanding when i see the human self in all other selves i do understand each and every one's needs like that of a sweeper guard old age people kids etc when the like when the caretaker of my kids demands advance wages i do understand her needs and i never digest this i pay her without questioning understanding that she needs to fulfill her physical facilities now it is clear to me that sorry step number 7 i am in coexistence in space the body is in coexistence in space as a conscious self and unconscious body i am occupying my place in this space and contributing to this existence this much only i understand from step number 7 now it is clear to me that happiness is my innate nature not outside force no outside force will make me happy it lies within myself i am fully responsible for it all the fluctuations whenever i face in my feelings it is because of me only i am the deciding factor to ensure happiness uh, i attend morning meetings listen to the other online content available regarding uhv uh, i keep checking myself where am i going wrong uh, an introspection keeps going on at regular intervals and i jot down when i feel too puzzled i also focus on right nurturing of my body uh, i am preconditioned in certain cases i am preconditioned where my limits don't allow me to go beyond certain things like family responsibilities responsibilities towards students in the institution sometimes social ones also so my commitment with uhv team is contributing in translation work from english to hindi or vice versa if i am given i will be able to collaborate with the volunteers i am grateful to uhv and complete uhv team for leading me towards a living based on right understanding and more refinement in my sensibilities i express my heartfelt gratitude to our mentors sharmila didi gopal babu bhaiya kumar sambhav bhaiya bhanu pratap bhaiya for listening so patiently to all the queries put by the co explorers and answering till the complete satisfaction of the participant so we our personalities give us a lot to learn when you the moment you people speak the way you respond it is a source of inspiration for us and i just want to continue with that very thought when you people explain i just feel mesmerized like how i don't want to just discontinue with that very thing but due to other engagements during the whole day time i just miss it and keep uh, engaged myself at some other thing so thank you so much thank you all the co explorers for enriching my understanding as your questions sometimes answer my queries as well and it's a journey together thank you so much thank you so much uh, pramod kumar didi it's a very means it's, it's a wonderful listening to you regarding day to day activities 
and very much relatable to many of us. And uh, uh, I, I must mention that DB has been attending this morning session from 7th batch and in the 9th batch. Yes, uh, yeah, I started of, with yeah, the 7th batch. Yeah. And in this 10th uh, batch, she has attended almost all days uh, yeah. except 2 3 days and in an average of 86 minutes per day. So it's quite, I mean, encouraging for many of us yeah. despite of so many things and uh, many things you put in your sharing that were yeah. really happening with many of us at uh, this particular age where kids are there in family. So a very uh, wonderful sharing, I should say. Thank you, Didi. Thank you, Bhaiya. Yeah. Kitchen and UHV food is my morning breakfast. <laughs> they they infect many of us. So, yeah, uh, yes, but sir. we have never, yeah, we have never heard you asking questions. But still, as uh, from your sharing, it is quite evident that you listen to uh, many questions, answers, and all that. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, we can. Uh, Listen from our mentors. So may I invite Gopal Bhaiya for comments and feedback. Gopal Bhaiya, Namaste. Namaste Bhaiya. Namaste Didi. Namaste Bhaiya. Namaste. So nice sharing Didi. And also question answers. You give appropriate answers. <clears throat> so it is good that you start your morning with UHV. And all the time, you try to be touched in all those steps. That is helping you to align with your natural acceptance. So this is good that we are in process. Few times I would like to pay everyone's attention because in outside world in market, few terms are very popular, like optimistic, pessimistic, positive, negative. So we can ask ourselves, do we want to be positive, negative, or natural? What is naturally acceptable to be? Be positive, be negative, or be natural. So definitely we will get answer natural. And to be natural state is our natural acceptance. So natural state means when my thoughts, feelings, sanskars are aligned with coexistence, harmony, and relation. So my positive and your positive may get conflict. My negative, your negative may be conflict. But what is naturally acceptable to me will also be naturally acceptable to you. So to be in a state of natural is very natural for all of us. And that we all are trying to be natural. And these steps are helping us to be in a state of this natural acceptance. So this is one part. Just to remind everyone because Many times we get influenced that terminology being circulated in the market outside. So be natural, this is important. And uh, when we are observing step number four, what is the uh, basis of my decision? Who is taking this decision? So we have to be aware. We have to observe it carefully. We are analyzing all these things or we are observing our feelings at that time. So if I am able to see my feeling, that feeling is going on, something which is not natural, then we have to observe our feeling also. So it is very important here to see whether we are analyzing or we are observing. So from analyzing to realization, we have to move towards realization. Generally, what we do, we keep analyzing the feelings or thoughts. 
which are arising in us. So we have to move towards this process of observation, towards this state of pure observer. With that state, I can evaluate my feeling. So we have to evaluate our feeling, not analyze our feeling. So if we will evaluate our feeling, then definitely uh, some qualitative shift will happen in us and that will sustain in us for a long time. But if we are only analyzing the situation, analyzing the problem, then we may feel relaxed for a while, but soon it will discontinue. So we have to evaluate, not to analyze the situation. We have to evaluate our feelings. So once we are comfortable inside, then we can analyze problems outside. So evaluation inside and analyzing outside. So this would be the right way to move towards inside and solve problems outside. And you are roaming around the visitors with the just I have shared so that everyone pay attention on these uh, topics. So that's all from my side, Didi. Best yeah, thank you so much, Bhaiya, for seeking my attention. Yeah, and you really like diagnosed it very well because I really stuck here. Yes, Didi. Thank you, Gopal yes. Bhaiya. Yeah. Every time your inputs are very much. Uh, helpful and useful for all of us. So thank you so much. Okay. Now, thank you. Uh, yeah. now we may invite uh, Sarmila Didi for our comments and suggestions. Namaste. Namaste Sabiko. Namaste Pramod Kumari Ji. Namaste Didi. Very nice to hear your sharing. It's always a pleasure to hear somebody who we have not heard yet. Um, you know, uh, asking questions or interacting. And then suddenly in the sharings, there is all this, uh, you know, uh, we are getting to hear about your listening on a regular basis. Tara Prasanaji mentioned about your attendance, which is quite remarkable, I must say. And of course, that shows your commitment which you have already said by yourself. So all this is really commendable. Like we keep saying, and you have heard us say practically almost every day, I think. Yeah, it is a long journey. A lot of observation is required. A lot of um, you know, introspection, a lot of looking within. Gopal Babuji has already mentioned many things. I think um, in many ways, it starts with listening to the content. Sometimes, for some people, even that may be a long time. But I think you have been listening intently and you are trying to imbibe as much as you hear. And it is reflecting in your behavior also. But you will find that as you keep looking within, trying to give time to seeing within, what is your feeling at every moment? What is it that, you know, you, that is making you uncomfortable at times? The answers keep coming slowly. In fact, if you see, I mean, the morning session is just a sort of um, an introduction to, um, you know, the process. But ultimately, the process is happening within us. What you gain from that process, every every person in the, you know, so many people are listening to the morning session. Morning session, whatever is being said is the same for all. But what every person gets from it can be different. Because we all see through our own filters. We all see through our own glasses of our sanskars. 
And so we get different things from it. We focus on different things, although the same thing is being said. So in that sense, it is all, the processing that is happening is all going on within us. And therefore, the observation that we are talking about also has to happen within. Without that detailed observation, it remains as a concept, a very nice concept. But eventually, it has to keep coming more and more and more into our living. Of course, the journey has already started, which is very obvious. I think there is scope for deeper observation. And I'm sure that, you know, you will be, you are committed to going for that. You mentioned it very correctly that, you know, fulfilling relationships, that is a sore point for all of us. And this fulfilling of relationships, why it's not happening, if you ask yourself, you will see it is that somewhere we lack the understanding of the relationship. When you feel that, you know, you feel the hurt, you said something hurtful to your mother or to anybody, we feel hurt inside. Try to check the feeling at that time when we were speaking to the other. What kind of feeling we had. Observe how you felt. Then go back and replay within and see how you felt at that time when you were speaking. That gives the hint about the feeling at that time. And so on. I mean, these are just small examples, but I think what you have mentioned in your sharing is really, um, you know, very clear, crisp about your own day-to-day -day examples. And you have put them forward in a very honest, straightforward and simple way that everybody can, you know, relate to. And that is a very big quality. And I think with all of this, you can your contribution, your participation will also be very useful to the whole team. So I would say think about that. Even in the college you mentioned, there are three or four of you now who are, uh, you know, uh, sort of going through these proposals. So uh, there is a very big possibility there also. You can meet once a week that you are doing already. I will give you the example of Suprajaji. She is one person, one individual in that big, in a big university. And of course, there is effort from many people in the university, but it was largely her effort that she went to all the department heads and the senior people in the university to talk about this UHV and how it is important for them to you know, hear it and for them to get this UHV workshop to be done in the college. One person can do a lot. So if three, four of you are there, you can get together, talk to your higher authorities and discuss the kind of impact this has had on you and how it could help in disciplining, in you know, self-disciplining of students. It could improve so many things. The quality of life on the campus. If you can put forward whatever you have gained from it and make it useful for others, that is, I think, the best gift that you can give to others. So think about that. And I think, you know, whatever help you may need from the others, from the volunteers, I'm sure that, you know, you can get that. And uh, I don't know if Suprajaji is there right now, but we can always, you know, you can talk to her and uh, get some inputs on how she went about things. And 
I think many, many possibilities are there. Yeah. I will wish you all the very best and look forward to your um, interaction more on the morning sessions, at least on weekends when, you know, uh, you are more free. But yeah. all the very best to you. Best wishes for your journey forward also. Thank you so much, Didi, for your valuable inputs. And you have very well clearly mentioned that there are a lot more possibilities in the organization as well as in my observations. And a UHV, uh, sir, we uh, sir have already like planning for a UHV workshop in the institute, but till it is in pending mode, we are just we will work together on that, and we will also make aware other colleagues about this very thing and how their lives and our own relationships in the campus can be improved by just making this journey together. Yes, very nice. And in fact, you know, um, colleagues is one part, but the higher um, authorities of the college, if you can involve those and they get interested, then it becomes a lot easier for things to happen in the, you know, uh, institute as such. So think about it and whatever guidance is needed, you know, you can always approach any of the volunteers. Yeah, all the very best. Yeah, sure, the uh, Yams improve and other things improve. Then we will definitely, like from top, you clearly mentioned from top level, like things become more easy to execute. Thank you so much, Sarmilajidi. Each word and every line is meaningful for all of us and not only DD, but all of us can put effort towards the same direction that self-development and development in our family, college, institutions. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Pramod Didi, for this nice, relatable sharing.